two thirds to go, and we start the remainder with Romania and the woman who beat the rest in Bucharest, Mara Stefania Stungoru. Now, a second year physics student, she grew up suffering from pharsophobia, a fear of being bored. To conquer this fear, uh, Mara Stefania tried to do anything she said that seemed interesting. This ranged from writing stories for children to playing the harmonica to training chickens. Repeat, training chickens. To do what? I do not know. Uh, somewhere along the way, she realized she liked knowing how stuff works and that physics is one of the ultimate ways to know how everything works. Uh, Mara Stefania says, attending Fame Lab was one of the best decisions I've made, and here's hoping she feels the same way three minutes from now. Friends and Romanian countrymen, I come here to praise Mara Stefania Strangaru. Credit card, laptop, telephone, my bracelet, and maybe a treatment for cancer. What can possibly be the connection between these things? All of them are using magnets. Right now, the magnetic field passes through me and all of you because the Earth is a huge magnet. It has inside melting iron that, that moves, creating a magnetic field that spread thousands of kilometers in space. This magnetic field protects us from harm from cosmic radiation, but that's the only detail. But how does a magnet work? Magnetism comes from the motion of electrons, which is electricity. If you take a wire wrapped around an iron needle, all you have to do is to connect the wire to a battery and bang, you get a magnet. But how is a permanent magnet working? It, it isn't connected to any battery. Let's do an experiment. Let's take a magnet and break it into really small pieces. What would you get? Add a magnet. From here, we conclude that each magnet is from, formed from a high number of tiny magnets, which are nothing else than the electrons which are spinning around the nucleus and around themselves. Okay. But in your uh, random uh, materials, the, these tiny magnets are randomly uh, distributed. We have a North Pole here, a North Pole here, a North Pole here, a North Pole here, and the total effect will be zero. It's like we're at a party and want to dance conga, let's say. But no one knows how. So we stay in a line, grab the person in front of us and start to move. I do one step forward, the person in front of, us, of me does two steps backwards, we will collide, we won't have any fun and our dance won't succeed. In materials like iron, there are neighboring uh, tiny magnets which point north into the same direction, they form domains. But the arrangement from one domain to another is chaotic, so usual iron won't have a magnetic field. But in a permanent magnet, all the tiny magnets point north into the same direction. Their magnetic field will accumulate and will produce the effects we all know. But why does a piece of iron, is a piece of iron attracted by a magnet? We all had this question in our mind at one time. Under the influence of the permanent magnet, the tiny little magnets from iron align. The iron will become a temporary magnet. And what do two magnets? They attract each other. But when the influence of the permanent magnet disappears, the tiny magnets from iron will go crazy, so iron won't have a magnetic field. So, magnets can come in different sizes and shapes, as huge as the Earth or as small as an atom. But it's really important to understand that there's nothing magical about them, and magnetism comes from electricity, the motion of electrons. Mara Stefania, that was energetic, original, interesting. You may now find yourself strangely drawn to your polar opposite, <laughs> our judges. <laughs> Mara, thank you. Uh, you were talking about the Earth's magnetic field. I mean, first of all, how is it generated, and why does it show this extraordinary reversal every few hundred thousand years or so? Um, the Earth's magnetic field is generated uh, by the liquid center, liquid core, which is formed from iron and nickel and other materials like that. Uh, these, will, these induce a uh, current, and the current will induce a magnetic field. And the Earth's magnetic field is switching because of that uh, liquid core. Uh, the equation which describes that liquid core are, qu are quite complicated, and, and um, it appears a lot of other processes in there, and that's why this, uh, this, uh, the Earth's magnetic field is changing. And actually, we cannot calculate really accurately uh, this change. Because um, when the pole, Earth pole will change, there will appear some, um, some chaotic movements. And it's like when you're spinning something, and at the, at the very end, it's chaotic. So 
Yeah, we cannot surely know. Like a gyroscope. Yeah, yeah, okay. exa exactly. Okay, great. Mm, thank you. Are there still things that we don't know and understand about magnets? Is there still active research into how magnets work? Uh, yes. I mean, if you go to the nanoscale, like uh, you just take one domain or for with a, a little small magnet, there are some things that aren't yet solved. Actually, even the spin of the electron, I mean, we see the effect, but we cannot demonstrate that the electron is really spinning. I mean, we can photograph it. Mm -hmm. no, does your work ha has to do with uh, magnetism? What? what? Like your work, your yes, study. Yes, I'm doing yes. my thesis in magnetism, in micromagnetism. And, and what's the question that you're trying to answer? How does a magnet work? And I want to connect uh, the magnetism with the electricity. In fact, it's electricity. I mean, if you take an that's electric field. That's, a, that, that's been known for more than 100 years. Yes. Huh? Yes, but so not many of us know that. Okay, not many know, but many will be finding out. One more time, please, for Mara Stefania Strangaro. Thank you.